Hi everyone. Um, so I've been waiting here for a queue um, uh, to uh, start my presentation, and um, I got the queue. So um, first of all, I am like really, really excited to be here. Um, I mean, DSConf is uh, um, a really amazing community, and I'm very, very, very excited to be here. It's a, it's such an honor, and uh, welcome to my session, everyone. Um, I'm really, really hoping that uh, all of you can uh, hear me well. Um, so um, I will just uh, share my screen, and... Um, I guess that uh, we would just um, we would just start. Um, so uh, here we are. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, really, um, we are now going into uh, a session of introduction um, to machine learning in Node.js. Um, I hope you would find it interesting. It has uh, some theory inside of it because uh, at least I want us to all understand the uh, fundamentals of uh, machine learning before we're talking about how to implement it in Node.js. Um, so, uh, but first, before, um, you know, talking about machine learning, let's talk a little bit about myself because, you know, usually um, this is, uh, you know, an obligation. So um, I, I write code for a lot of years. Uh, writing code is my main passion. I also manage large teams and I was architect at um, several companies. Um, currently, I am the backend team leader of a startup called Axiom Cyber which is um, a really, really uh, cool uh, startup. Um, so what we're doing is we're simulating uh, a cyber attack on a computer network. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, extremely interesting here in Axum Cyber. Um, a lot of uh, graph theory algorithms. In addition for that, I was a CTO of a startup of my own. And um, in that startup, I have started to... Um, you know, uh, first of all, I wrote the entire backend code in Node.js myself from scratch. And, um, well, it was a really uh, exciting experience. Um, but um, then, you know, I fell in love with the platform of Node.js. And um, I, uh, like, really um, started to get interested in the internals of the language and the architecture um, so then I developed my passion into Node.js. You're all welcome to uh, follow me on Twitter, and that's my Twitter handle. And um, some other things that I would like to say about myself. I just finished my maternity leave. I have three kids. I love to play my violin. I'm a professional violin player. And uh, I'm also a community leader of uh, JavaScript Israel community. Um, so JavaScript Israel is the largest JavaScript meetups um, in Israel, and uh, we have a series of meetups in front-end um, uh, material and on and uh, um, server side. And so if you're around in Israel, you're really welcome to join us in one of our meetups. But first, let's talk about what we can do with machine learning. So in order to do that, I would like to um, actually um, stop here. And I would like to go to, um, actually, I'd like to go to my browser. And I would like to show you um, a small application that I've wrote. Uh, wow, um, a little bit of a funny situation is going to happen right now because I'm going to share the browser, so I'm going to share myself. But let's do that. Uh, yeah, that recursion, but uh, yeah, let's see that. Um, so I want us to classify some images. Right, okay, 
So here I have a small demo of a server and a client. A uh, client is uh, written in Angular, and the client is sending images to the server. And the server is going to tell us what uh, each image is show. So here is the first image. Uh, we have here a panda bear. If we're going to ask the server what this is, well, that is a really nice prediction. It says, well, this is a giant panda, a panda, or a panda bear, or, um, yeah, it's going into some uh, really uh, complicated definitions of uh, uh, species of panda bears, and that is really cool. Now let's look at the second image. So this is a rabbit. And if we're going to ask the server, what is this? So the server is saying to us, yeah, this is an air, okay? Uh, which is cool because an air is actually a female rabbit. Um, that is, um, yeah, that is uh, really, really cool because it didn't uh, recognize that this is a rabbit. It also like classified it as a female rabbit, which is more advanced um, in order to do that. Uh, let's go into the third image. So that is something that I guess most of us really, really like, and that is ice cream. I mean, at least I like, really, really like um, ice cream uh, in the summer. And uh, if I'm uh, clicking on that image, of course I have ice cream, and that is also a correct prediction. This is, this is cool. Uh, image number four, this is um, a vase of flowers, and if we're gonna asking uh, my server, my machine learning server, what this is. Uh, well, it tells me that this is a vase. Mm, cool. So, um, another image. So, this is like a bunch of balloons flying in the sky. And if I'm going to press on that, so the server is giving a correct prediction of balloons. Uh, and that's it. That is very, very, very cool. Um, correct. All correct prediction right now. Now, here I have an image of a butterfly. If I'm pressing that image, so that is like even more accurate because my algorithm didn't, um, you know, it classified the image um, as like the exact butterfly species. Um, that, you know, the word that you see here, let's see, I need is like the specific species of that butterfly itself. And that is like uh, very, very, very um, cool that, you know, that my algorithm has, has succeeded to classify that image as the species itself. So um, let's see what we have here. Um, that image is classified as a valley, um, which is also correct. And the last image, um, I know those are a lot of cookies, but my algorithm is classifying that as a baker shop, um, uh, which is uh, really, really cool. Okay, so uh, we've got some really cool predictions here. And uh, now I am going to stop that recursion and I'm gonna go back to my presentation after uh, we have seen um, you know, um, the demo that I wanted to show you. So uh, let's go back to, um, you know, to the presentation and continue to talk a little bit about machine learning. So after we've seen a little bit what machine learning can do, and uh, we've seen my uh, really cool demo. Um, so what is machine learning? So machine learning is actually, well, most of the time, um, you have a model. Your model contains an algorithm. Uh, your alg algorithm is being trained. Okay, so your algorithm is not working out of the box. Okay, you give it a large data set. It can be images, it can be data. It is examining the data set. According to the examination, it is like, you know, um, starting to fetch like bunch of da data into the algorithm and getting results for the data. According to those results, the algorithm fixes itself a little bit. And then um, when you get like a data that you want to get answer to, like a data, a data that you want to predict the result for that data, um, then um, you know, um, your algorithm 
is giving you the conclusions according to what it already processed. So as we said, you're implementing an algorithm, you study, you study that according to a data set that you have. And well, actually what the algorithm is actually doing is searching patterns, okay? So uh, we're searching patterns according to the data that we have. And I am using these patterns to perform the task of predicting um, something for my new model. Um, let's talk about some machine learning algorithms. So a lot of like e-commerce suggestions, suggestions are rely are um, you know based on that. Uh, we have the Spotify suggestions list here, and uh, there are many more implementations to that. Um, like for example, Facebook suggestions. For example, is also um, is also um, very based on machine learning. Um, like the, the learning, it, it learns the patterns that you're using. Pinterest suggestions, like pages you might like. This is also um, based on that. So there's a lot of implementations for that. After we've spoke about that, I want us all to like be in the same line and. Talk about machine learning fundamentals. Okay, so let's just talk about the basic concept of machine learning. So, um, you know, we would all like talk in the same language. So first of all, let's talk about how to build a machine learning model. And when we're building a machine learning model, we have um, several actions we have to do. We have to define what type of the model would be. Um, then we're fitting the model, we're doing fit. We're giving the model a bunch of data and then we're searching pattern. And um, then at the end, we're doing like predictions on the, um, on the patterns that we did. And for new data, we're doing evaluation. And for evaluation, meaning that uh, when we're receiving new data, we are seeing um, which result we got. And then um, after we, we saw which result we got, um, we actually compare like um, the result we got and the like the actual result or understand what is the measure measure of the error that we have. Um, we are not uh, going to like learn how to fit an algorithm here because those are courses courses that um, um, can take uh, like uh, like I don't know several months. Like this is extremely complicated. But um, I would like to um, show you an example of a data set. Um, so just um, that is like a really simple uh, data set, which is a CSV actually. Um, actually, I have that CSV in my computer. It's uh, really large. It's, um, um, I think, 400 megs of CSV, a lot of lines in here. Um, but what we're seeing is um, a data set which is called a Melbourne data set. And this Melbourne data set is, uh, is a like, really known training data set um, for machine learning. And um, like for machine learning courses, what, what it's showing, it's like data on Melbourne houses. And according to those parameters, we are going to um, like take decisions of what is the price of this house. We have the address of the of the house. We have the uh, number of rooms. We have the type of the house, whether it is like a standard house or a fancy house. And um, we have the distance from the city center. All of those are parameters according to which we're going to work. Um, so let's start to talk about step one, choosing a model to train. So I am going to take decision tree model. Why decision tree? So I, I have to say that most of um, our machine learning algorithms are not based on decision tree. Decision tree is the most uh, simple uh, machine learning algorithm. It is very, very simple. Um, and it is good for like our training and to understand how you know the whole thing works. It is rule based. Uh, you will see it immediately. It's really easy to understand. 
Um, it is basic for like many more complicated machine learning mm -hmm. algorithms. And now we're going to predict house prices. So let's talk about um, what is a decision tree. All right. So this is a decision tree. And now we're asking a question. Does the house have more than four bedrooms? If the answer is yes, the price would be above $150,000. And if the and if the answer would be no, then the price would be below one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So and then you know it's not that simple. Let's just look a little bit about uh, a more sophisticated um, decision tree. So first of all, we're asking whether we have more than four bedrooms or not. Um, but then we're asking. What is the size of the house? Is it smaller than 100 square meters or is it bigger than 100 square meters? And if it's bigger than 100 square meters, we're talking about um, like a whole range of prices, a whole different range of prices. And um, so, um, you know, if, if, it's, uh, if it's bigger than 100 square meters, then um, you know, it's the higher price here. It's one hundred and seventy thousand um, dollars. Um, that's it, actually. Um, that is a, an example of decision tree. But imagine that in real life, you know, this is like a really simple example. You would have a huge decision tree with a lot of levels and a lot of like paths from the root to the node. You would get a really big decision tree. Um, step two would be, uh, let's fit and predict, uh, the data. What we're doing here, we're gonna, um, actually select several columns of, of our data set. Uh, for example, we are definitely going to select, uh, the distance from the city center and the number of rooms, and we're gonna set them as variable X. Um, we're gonna, um, uh, pick a column that we want to predict that column. Um, all right, so if we would like to predict that column, um, for example, the house prices, I mean, in the training data, I have like a lot of data about um, pricing of houses. And for each house, I have, okay, the price is uh, $100,000. I have this number of rooms. I have um, this number of... Um, um, I don't know, the number of city center is like this. The house is a fancy fancy one or a simple one. So uh, we're going to predict the, the price. So that is the column that um, we want to predict. And the price is the prediction target. Okay, that is, a, um, that is like a definition that you have to remember. Mm -hmm. Prediction target, which is why. And we are going, of course, to predict results. Now... I would like us to see, first, uh, finally, a demo in Node.js about decision tree. And for that, um, I'm going to um, share my VS Code, I think. Um, and we're going to look closely at the code. And after that, after we're going to um, look closely at the code in um, VS Code, and uh, after we're done with that, um, we are going to um, go to the command line and see a little bit how this works. Um, but let's look at the code, for example. Um, cool. I hope that everyone can see this properly. Um, first of all, let's talk about the basics, and I hope that the size of um, you know if the code is okay, and you know it's large enough. Maybe I would make it a little bit larger. Um, I don't know. I hope, I hope that that is fine. Um, so let's talk about the code. Um, I have here a really, really simple express server. And, um, well, um, first of all, um, I have one route that this express server is, um, exposing. And that is a route of predict. And here I have my model which is the Melbourne dataset controller, and I am doing predict. On that, of course, I'm running on port uh, 3000, um, but what is more interesting 
is for us to look at my model and my controller. So let's look at the project structure first. Mm -hmm. I have here a model and I have here a controller. So let's look at the model itself. Here I am using a really, really simple library of um, decision tree. Um, so this library is um, actually, it's one of the several libraries that we have in Node.js. We don't have a lot of richness of libraries of machine learning here. Um, but, um, you know, that library is good for giving us the basics um, of the machine learning. So let's look at that. Uh, let's look at the code. So we have an init function here. Um, well, the init function is actually looking for a CSV. That is the CSV of the training that data that I've told you about. Um, so here it's not really um, important. I am just um, reading the data set from this file. And here is another important thing. Um, so as we said, the, my prediction target is actually the price, right? You can see here, uh, I'm doing an action of filtering the price filtering on the records with an empty price. Why I'm doing that? Because in machine learning, well, the problem of empty values is, uh, is a complicated problem. And in the scope of this lecture, we are not going to, um, we're not going to, um, you know, deal with that problem because um, it requires uh, much more study. Uh, than the study time that we have here. Uh, so we're going to filter all the empty, um, you know, prices. And, um, well, um, these are the features. This is like the X column. This is like the data according to which we're going to predict. So now, um, well, what's happening here is that we are initializing our decision tree with all the records that um, we gave it as a prediction. Um, as, as a data set to train on. Um, here is like uh, the, our prediction. Well, it gives us um, the data set. It just gives us um, the decision tree. It gives us the predict options. Um, so we're going to transfer here room, distance, and type. And uh, we're going to get a result. So um, here also, uh, what's happening here, it's like that controller, that is what the server is talking to. And here, um, what we're doing is very simple. We're calling uh, decision tree dot predict. And the init, um, the init itself, it's just, um, it's called here once the model is uploaded. So let's go into the command line. And let's see how everything here works. Uh, I'll just go to my command line, which I think it's here. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see what we've got here. Here I have a server running from the previous demo. So I would just go to... Um, this demo and uh, what do I have here? Uh, well, these are all the files. So I'm going to do node uh, index.js. All right, now my server is up and running. That is very, very cool. And here also I'm going to um, get away from here and I'm just going to go to decision tree first demo. And I have a client here, a really, really simple client that is uh, sending requests um, to my uh, server. And yeah, I'll just make it a little bit larger so you can all see. So yeah, so I'm, I'm making it a little bit larger. So here um, I've sent him um, several requests. I was saying, okay, what is the prediction of a price for a room with, for a house with four rooms uh, with a, Type H, which is um, like the um, more uh, standard, 
and a distance of two and a half miles from the city center. And it gave me a prediction of $160,000. For two rooms, it gave me a prediction of um, uh, 94. Um, oh, it's much better. It's more than a million. It's uh, it's much much more expensive. Wow, I, I didn't uh, I didn't notice. So it's close to a million. Um, if we have only two rooms, and if we're talking about the fancier house like the Type T here, so we got a predictions of one hundred and eighty seven. Um, all right. So I will just um exit the full screen here, and um yeah, that was like the um, um like the first uh demo. Um, let's go back to the presentation and um, to finish our uh, quick uh, machine learning uh, course. All right. Um, so after we've seen the decision tree demo, I would like to talk about evaluating how mm -hmm. accurate our model. So actually, um, yeah, so that... Uh, probably looks a little bit scary to you, uh, I don't know, all these uh, mathematical, but there is nothing uh, um, scary here. What we're doing is actually just um, um, taking the, um, you know, the real price of the house, for example, and then we are um, doing, uh, um, we, we're subtracting the predicted, the prediction that we have, gave, and um, we're giving here an absolute value, and at the end, um, uh, we are dividing that with number of testing subjects. So that is how we are um, calculating the evaluation. And you would see that in the decision uh, um, tree library, you can just enable um, error evaluation and then make your algorithm better. Um, Actually, we're going to skip on the measuring errors demo, and I think we're going to go into Node.js a little bit and talk about like uh, what's happening in Node.js and what are the most popular machine learning libraries. So what do we have? So I think that the most known is TensorFlow. The most known is TensorFlow. Um, TensorFlow is, um, is um, a very... Um, well, actually, it came from Python. Um, it has like a lot of models, and there is a lot of vector work here in TensorFlow. And um, so that is like the most popular machine learning library in JavaScript. Another library is uh, BrainJS. BrainJS, I think it was developed in Stanford, to my opinion. Um, um, I mean, BrainJS and Synaptic and CovNetJS, all of them were developed in uh, MIT and Stanford, to my opinion. Um, all of those libraries are actually based on machine learning and uh, based on uh, neural networks um, algorithms. And um, all of them, uh, you, can find, you can find them uh, useful um, in like uh, training and predicting algorithms. So if you are, um, you know, um, talking about machine learning in, uh, in Node, so well, most of the people go to TensorFlow. Um, but yeah, you can work with other implementations as well. Let's talk about um, what is TensorFlow. So TensorFlow, um, um, actually, as I said, as I said, it works a lot with vectors and matrices. Uh, most of the algorithms are based on uh, like a lot of vector work in TensorFlow. Uh, what is also really good in TensorFlow is that you have a lot of algorithms that are coming as a black box. And when you have an algorithm that is coming as a black box, well, it's really easy to implement it in your code because you know all the training cycle. So that algorithm, you know, is already trained on a very large data set. Um, the basic unique over there is a tensor, which is uh, kind of similar to a vector. So that is TensorFlow. But now I would like to show you a really simple demo. 
about TensorFlow, which shows us how to use TensorFlow um, in a really simple way. So remember that image classification that we've spoke about? So uh, I am going to show you um, the code itself for the image classification. So yeah, I'm going to go back into my VS Code and I'm going to open, um, actually, I'm going to open the um, image classification um, demo. And let's look at the code over here and you would be totally surprised to see that the code is super simple um, in order to use TensorFlow. So um, let's look at everything in here. That is the client side. And um, well, here is the model. And let's talk about that from the beginning. Um, so here is my server, all right? It's an express server, um, really, really common. I think that's all of you are working with express, um, uh, something very, very common. And we have here uh, one route, which is um, actually, um, which is exposed. And this route is called classify. Um, all right. So the classify, um, actually what it does, well, here it's a, it's a simple implementation. It's not like the implementation uh, with the client side. We're just getting here an image name and then we're doing a classify because, um, you know, the images are saved here. And let's look at the uh, ML model is actually uh, the tensor model. It's that model. So let's look here what is going on. And here we're getting a little bit into TensorFlow um, because um, here we, you have two libraries that you have to install. One of them is TensorFlow.js and the other one is TensorFlow node.js. So this is actually cool because, um, you know, TensorFlow was not supporting Node um, until like a few, a few um, um, until a period ago, but now they're supporting it and it's uh, very good. They support it only client-side operations. Um, and here is the model that I'm using. It's called MobileNet. And this model is gives us like, um, you know, the ability to predict what an image is and it's already trained, it's already um, gone over like a huge data set of uh, images and um, you don't have to train it, it's already trained. Uh, okay, you have, I have file system here, I have JPEG, that is not really interesting. Um, well, I have first of all um, an init function and init function is just uh, doing load uh, on the mobile app, here's some of the like the training, the built-in training is done, and then you know all the model is um, getting in here. And look at the classify. The classify is extremely simple. Um, so, uh, well, we have the path, and uh, we're reading the image. We're converting it into um, um, like um, um, an input that the model can uh, work with. And here we're doing it with uh, a library of um, TF node, as, I'm sorry, a method of TF node, which is called the code JPEG. And um, so uh, TF node itself is um, like taking the JPEG itself and converting it into vectors and into tensors that we can work on. And then after, after all of that, we're getting the class name. So actually you see that here all the prediction is done and that code is um, extremely simple. That is also um, another thing that I would like to tell you. Um, so it's, well, usually it's uh, really, really good to um, use the machine learning algorithms as black box. You have a lot of black box algorithms in, in, that you can just uh, like um, work with and combine them in your code. Um, uh, let's see how that thing works. And I am, I would just go to, um, my CMD right now. I would just go to, into my bash. 
and yeah so here we have that let's go um into the right directory so um i will just do this uh, i will just see the image classification demo and we're gonna do a node index.js and now it's oh my god okay so what happened here is that i have a server running oops um never mind right now it's gonna work it says address already in use and now everything is good and now we're gonna go into the right directory here we're gonna do image classification demo and here i have a, a client application um i will just make my screen larger and you can see so what it does it just like sends the image name and we've got the uh, right prediction we've seen that we've got like for panda um you see that uh i'll try to make it bigger uh okay that um uh, for panda mm -hmm, cool now that looks good i hope uh, so panda, we're, we've got the giant panda and the panda and the panda bear and everything. And rabbit, we've got the air. So that is the code that done it behind the scenes. Um, all right. So that is very, very cool. Um, after doing that, um, let's go back to our presentation and let's see some demo of BrainJS. And let's talk a little bit about neural networks. Um, Yay, so we're back in business. Um, let's talk a little bit about BrainJS and implementation in BrainJS. Um, that is good. So, um, what BrainJS is in a nutshell? So, BrainJS is a library which has a GPU accelerate, accelerating for neural networks. Um, GPU accelerating is a uh, a very important um, optimization um, that is done on the engine. So um, it's it's really good that they have that. Um, it also, it gives you the algorithms as a black box, all right? And if that's the case, you don't have to be like a neural network expert in order to work with it, which is good. Um, it gives you the algorithm as a black box. Um, of course, here, I think you would have to provide the data set and, um, you know, but you, uh, you know, um, the algorithm would be, you would do a little bit of training and um, then you would be good to go. So what are neural networks? I would like to give like a um, small explanation about that. A neural network is a set of algorithms and they're modeled according to the human brain. Uh, of course, they're designed to recognize patterns as like all, this is what machine learning algorithms are doing. They're recognizing patterns. So what is a neuron? A neuron is actually, um, it's actually the main, like the main, like um, nerve unit in our brain. Um, well, actually, so here we're not like talking about live neurons. We're talking about the mathematic models that is a little bit modeled according to like um, the neurons that we have in the brain. Um, uh, don't get scared. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we're talking about artificial neurons and we're getting an input into the neuron and um, the output give us some kind of a prediction. Just imagine like a network of um, an a lot of artificial ne neurons that all of them are, well, first uh, some of them receive an input and then they generate an, un an output and they transfer it to the next neuron. Um, that is like in a nutshell what's happening. So those got the input of the, um, the picture and then they're transferred transfer like that um, to uh, the next neuron and he's generating an output itself from the input it got 
And then we've got a network. Now um, let's um, go to a small demo of Brain.js. And um, I'm going to um, open my VS Code. But here I want us to do um, something interesting. I would open the demo itself and I would explain. Um, so what I want us to do here, here it is. All right, cool. Uh, we have the code. Everything is very, very cool. So this demo is all about um, I hope that all of you are familiar with Donald Trump. Well, all of you, of course, familiar with Donald Trump. And um, you're familiar with Donald Trump Twitters. Um, so Donald Trump really liked to tweet. And he has a lot of interesting twi tweetings. And, um, you know, some of them are very con funny and controversial. Um, but now we're going to build a model that is receiving a sentence and it is trying to predict whether this sentence is a real tweet of Donald Trump or no. Um, so um, let's start with the machine learning model and let's see what is going on here. Well, this is a Brain.js. Of course, we're doing required Brain.js. And this is like um, our data set. So that is the input that we have. Um, let's say, let's see what we ha have here. If I had a nickel for every time I've cried in the back of an Uber, I would have another pair of Yeezys. All right, so this is something that Donald Trump actually tweeted. Cool. That moment when pink feels so good, you start crying. That is also something that Donald Trump has tweeted. Interesting. Um, that is cool. Um, so according to that data set that we have here, let's look at, um, yeah, at um, um, like the main function and how we are entering here. So that is our main function. Um, actually, um, um, what we're doing, well, that is the main function for training. Um, we're getting the neural network model. Uh, mm -hmm. We're doing process training data. Um, and that, there, here we have, we're getting the trained net. And uh, let's look at our um, algorithm. So what we're doing is we're mapping the data and we're trying to do um, encoding to um, all of um, the data that we got. We got, actually we're encoding every character. That is like the algorithm that we're going to do. Um, so, um, Let's look here, and yeah, so of course, according to, so what we've done here, I mean, for all of the data we're encoding, and after, like, the encoding, uh, encoding of each, like, um, of each, um, you know, character, we are um, giving an answer um, whether, um, whether um, you know, that was a tweet or not. And the data set, of course, it, it um, contains a sentence, you see here's a sentence and an output. I mean, those um, those um, like outputs are um, whether Trump's actually said that or no. And let's look at um, what we're going to do uh, when we're getting something. Here we're getting in, um, input. Um, we are launching the trained net and we're encoding the input because that was the trained net actually did. So according to the encoding, um, you know, we have uh, operated the neural network inside and um, we uh, have done, um, we have done, um, you know, our prediction and gave an answer. So that is um, uh, the result. And here, you know, we're just um, um, giving an answer, whether it's an official Trump or a fake Trump. Um, I would just in the background, um, you are all probably seeing my code right now. Um, so, um, here is the server itself. Uh, let's see how it's like, um, built. Of course, an express server and I'm getting my machine learning model 
And uh, you know, when the server is up, I'm doing, um, I'm operating, I'm executing the train function. Um, um, well, I'm, I'm executing the train function. And um, then here is the router um, that I expose. I expect to get here a phrase. And that's it. I just give it to my algorithm and I'm returning results. Um, that is what I'm doing over here. And um, yeah, that is cool. I would like to show you how it works. Um, actually here, you know, we, we can just work with Postman. Um, I don't know if you're all familiar with Postman. Um, actually, when I'm doing that, you know, not all on it, so probably much funny. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm operating the server in background. There's no um, need for you to all to look at my command line now. Um, um, all right, so um, yeah, so uh, let's just, um, I will just share my postman for a second. And uh, you will just see the, the phrase that I am sending. Um, yeah, this is actually, so here is the postman itself. So uh, we're saying here, and when you're waiting for the waiter, aren't you the waiter? And we're going to send, and, uh, ooh, what happened? Yeah, this is not up. Um, all right, guys, I, I have address already in use. Um, exception, I didn't notice that. Um, of course, um, but right now my server is up. Um, yeah, looks like I don't have any address already in use right now. And, um, yeah, right now we can't have any response. And, um, maybe it's still in the training phase. And if we're going to try again. Okay. Uh, it took some time for the server to get up. Um, because, you know, it did training and this training, um, I don't know if you paid attention. That, but that was like a synchronous operation, which was also CPU intensive operation. But um, so it took time for the server to um, get up. But after, you know, um, the server is up and running, we've got um, the results. But yeah, I just, um, you know, mentioned that BrainJS algorithm are CPU intensive. And I would like to, um, you know, talk about that problem and talk about the problem specifically in um, Node.js. So I would like to get your attention here. Um, well, now in BrainJS demo, I hope that you've uh, noticed that we don't have a lot of async await in the code. Um, actually, in major parts of the algorithms, we don't have async await, meaning that this um, action is, meaning that this algorithm is synchronous. So now we're going to get into, um, you know, the question whether JavaScript is the go-to uh, programming language for machine learning. Um, yes, no, or maybe. So the answer is probably maybe because you can write machine learning um, algorithms in JavaScript. Um, well, the main problem is that the algorithms are CPU intensive. And uh, matri matrix manipulations currently are not uh, like super efficient in um, Node.js core. And there's not much richness of libraries, but there are a lot of libraries that you can work with. Um, but I want to like um, go deep into the uh, CPU intensive problem. And I would like to talk a little bit about Node.js architecture in order to explain that problem. Um, so um, Node.js architecture is based on a principle of non-blocking I.O. What is non-blocking I.O.? Um, if you're talking about traditional languages like Java, for example, if I'm doing an I.O. operation such as database query, I'm usually waiting 
um, I'm usually waiting for um, the result and I'm doing something with the result. And that is, in that case, I have to work in multi-threading model, a lot of threads operating, a lot of requests. Here, JavaScript is saying no. While I'm doing IO operation, I would do other actions from other um, responses that I get in my server. And in that case, we're working with an event loop. Cool. So if we're working with an event loop, um, a request is coming to the event loop. A callback is being registered behind the scene, behind all of this async wait, all this our uh, callbacks. And uh, so a callback is being registered. Um, well, the event loop starts to execute, um, you know, the um, exact um, operations of that request. And when we have an IO operation, if it's asynchronous, we're doing offloading to another component called worker thread pool. This component is executing the asynchronous operation, and then it goes back to the event loop, okay? The worker thread, thread pool is actually um, based on libuv. Um, this is the library that is doing that, which is cross-platform and can work with uh, all operating systems that um, uh, you're familiar with. But when, um, like, let's say the database query is, is uh, done, so the event loop gets a signal and um, the callback, the, um, the, uh, the callback that we're talking about, um, that is that fits to that, that handles that database query is being executed. Um, well, let's talk about why CPU intensive operations and CPU intensive algorithm don't shine usually in Node.js. Um, well, we have a constant amount of threads here, okay? Um, well, we have the event loop, which is one thread. And in addition to that, we have the worker thread pool, which are um, also, mm -hmm. it's, it's a constant amount of threads, actually. Um, so um, every CPU intensive operation, if it's not offloaded to the worker thread pool, it would block the event loop. And then, you know, you would get the effect in your server that it is frozen. If it's offloaded to uh, one of the worker threads, then, you know, because this is a constant amount of threads, one of your worker threads is blocked with that uh, busy long operation. So I prepared a small demo to show that to you, to all of you. So again, I would go um, into my VS Code. Um, let's go into my VS Code. Um, here's the Donald Trump demo. And I will just um, really show you that demo. Um, it is um, giving you, actually it's giving you, um, we're doing to compare the results of a server which has a CPU intensive operation and a server which doesn't have, um, which works asynchronously. The same operation is, is worked with the asynchronous API. Um, so these are the two servers that I have. Um, let's look at that. Cool. Um, great. So what do we have here? Um, that is the express server of the synchronous operation. I have run route that I'm exposing. And what this server is doing is generating a hash to a password, which is um, a CPU intensive operation. And it's using the crypto models that I hope all of you are familiar with it. And yeah, that is cool. Um, so here, that is the API that we're using and it is totally synchronous. Okay. And then after um, talking about that, uh, let's look at the asynchronous server. Um, that is the same server. We're doing the same crypto operation, generating the hash. You see that is the password that we're gen generating the hash to. But uh, here we have uh, a CPU. Um, well, that is, that is an asynchronous operation. Look at what I am marking to you now. Uh, what I'm marking to you now, it is, um, you know, that is the callback that is being used. 
And here you can see that we're offloading it to the um, um, like the worker thread pool. It's, it's going to be asynchronous and the event loop is not going to be blocked. Now, um, I am going to share my command line and we're going to do a little bit of performance measurement and we're going to compare results of how these two servers are running. Okay, so it won't happen again. As you can see that, you know, I had a lot of problems. Of, I didn't shut down the server previously. Uh, so we're going to go into CPU intensive demo and I'm going to make sure um, that I don't have any, um, I don't have any, um, you know, running servers around here. Um, cool. So yeah, so here I'm in the right place. Here I'm not in the right place. I have to go into CPU demo. Cool. So um, I am going to use a tool called AutoCannon for measuring um, results. Um, so I'm going to do this. Okay, cool. The server is running and I'm going to take a command um, from somewhere in the side that I had prepared in advance for myself. Um, okay, so I am, what I'm doing is I'm going to measure the performance with a tool called AutoCannon. And yeah, so what this tool is doing, it's actually, um, I'm going to simulate 10 concurrent connections um, entering the server and all of them are, are bombarding the server with um, results. Uh, now my code is running, code is running, code is running, cool. And, um, okay, so let's see. So we have succeeded to, uh, when we're measuring performance, it's, it's always good to look at the 99th percentile because when you're giving an SLA, uh, you're saying to a third party, okay, all of my requests are going to be faster than something, then you would have to, you want to look at those percentiles. And uh, you can see here, like the median here is one second and a half, which is pretty high. And we have succeeded on average to handle six requests per second, which is not so good. And yeah, the average was also one second and a half. And yeah, those are the results for synchronous operation. Now I'm going to take down that server and I'm going to do node async crypto server. And I'm going to run that simulation again, and we're going to see what we have succeeded to handle when we're working with asynchronous operation. This is one of the fundamentals in Node.js. Always work with asynchronous operation. Okay, first here we have succeeded to handle five requests per second on average, and here eight. And look at that response time. The response time had improved drastically from one second and a half here to one second here on average. And like the 99th percentile that was three seconds here was one and a half seconds here. The maximum has like is, is much less. And those are like much better results that we're seeing here. Um, so yeah, so there is a like really big difference. Um, I'm going to go back to my presentation. There is really big difference between async operations and synchronous operations. And those are the main problems with machine learning operations. You've seen the TensorFlow is not like that. But um, yeah, that is one of the main problems. So in CPU intensive tests, uh, what we can do, we can just fork another process. But to do the, those, but I don't really recommend to work like that in production because imagine that if you have to fork one process for every request that is coming to your server, then you know, you're bounded to the number of cores that you have in your machine and uh, it's not going to ha be handled well. We can work with worker threads and we can do um, scaling up with queues and Pack our applications with Docker containers, like send, if we have a CPU intensive operation, send a message to a queue, um, put consumers in the other side of the queue, and they would just take the message. Um, those are child processes. And as I said, 
they're not going to scale good for you. Um, imagine that you have four cores in your machine and the, you're opening 20 child process. That is not working well. And that's exactly um, why you don't want to use child process uh, because they're bounded to the amount of CPUs that you have in your machine. Um, I would like to offer you another solution of worker threads that actually it's quite improved since node version number 12 and it works very, very well. I've done another session on worker threads um, uh, like a month ago and you can find it online, but that can give you um, a good solution for CPU intensive algorithms and for machine learning algorithms. I would just like, you know, quickly show you the code. Oops. I will just quickly show you the code of that, of how to use worker threads. Um, specifically, we're going to open the Brain.js again. Uh, but now with worker threads, uh, we're just going to look at how like worker threads are fitting into the implementation. Um, yeah, that is the code. Exactly. So we're going to go over it extremely fast because I have like one minute, exactly one minute um, to talk, I think. Um, so here is the server itself. Works a wow, that works a little bit slow right now. Oops. Okay. Yeah, I think it's calmed down. Express server. Uh, we have here um, some another model which calls CPU intensive task and a function here of get tweet results. CPU intensive task is actually, um, let's go over that, it's here. That is CPU intensive task. What is this? So here you're starting to see the worker threads. Um, you were crying the worker threads. Uh, we're opening a new worker and on message, um, well, worker threads are work with method messages, uh, kind of similar to child processes. So, um, yeah, so on message, um, um, we're actually, actually we're logging it. And um, if we're exiting also, we have here something. And um, that is the worker itself. So what that is doing, it's just running a script of a worker, okay? Just running a script of a worker, and that is a, like the script that is being run. And here we're using our machine learning model, and here we're doing execute. We have a pointer here to the parent port, and then we're posting the results. Um, this is uh, what we're doing. So this is how to, you know, to combine, how to wrap your machine learning code with a worker thread which I strongly recommend that every time that you use machine learning code inside your Node.js server, you do that. Um, I have another implementation of working with worker thread pools, um, like creating a thread pool of worker threads, and you can definitely find it online. Um, I, I would also share it on Twitter. And yeah, this is scaling up with queues, which, um, also a very good solution. It is probably the best solution, uh, meaning that a producer send messages to a message queue like RabbitMQ, and um, you know all of the consumers are uh, processing it, and you're just taking up consumers according to the leg that you have in the queue. Uh, well, queues are better. Um, worker threads are limited to uh, the current machine resources, but we really worker threads if you work correctly with them in production and efficiently are showing very, very good results. And if you don't have the time to um, take a lot of like Docker infrastructure, then this is a really good solution. Um, well, do you have any questions? Um, we can do a Q and A in the end, but all of you are definitely welcome to follow me on Twitter. Um, I would also put more efficient implementations of worker thread there. And I would like to thank all of our sponsors um, uh, for um, you know sponsoring this amazing uh, conference. Um, that is um, 
very important. Anyone has um, questions? Maybe? All right, so it's, it's um, really been a pleasure um, to be here. And I am very excited um, to be here. And um, that's it. I mean, uh, very exciting to be here. So thank you very much, everyone. And um, goodbye.